So James Harden made his Brooklyn Nets debut last night, and what a debut it was as he went for 32 points. He had 12 rebounds, 14 assists, 4 steals. I mean, yeah, he was playing a bit of defense. I mean, look, James Harden does not move his feet too well on defense, but he's pretty good at stripping the ball away, so I'll give him that. It definitely helps, of course. The problem was the nine turnovers. I get it, but, you know, he's playing a first game with his new team. You know, you need time to get acclimated and know who you're playing with. He hasn't played with Kevin Durant in, like, eight years probably, and, you know, he's, he's new teammates with Joe Harris and basically everyone else on this team he's a new teammate with except for, like, Jeff Green probably. But, yeah, give him time. Um, you know, the turnovers are a bit concerning. I know Kevin Durant and James Harden combined for 15 turnovers last night the team had 19 total which is a bit too much but it will get better I really do think so so um yeah I mean outside of the turnovers I think James Harden was phenomenal of course and he was more of like a team first type of guy when we saw him play in Houston the past few years it was more of like he's the centerpiece he knows it he's gonna shoot the ball you know, shoot contested jump shots. And yeah, he took some contested jumpers in this game, but I feel like a lot of them went in. So I was very satisfied with that. But for the most part, he was more of a facilitator. He was a guy that you can tell really played in the Mike D'Antoni offense for a long time. He was pushing the ball up the floor any chance he got. He had that really cool, I don't know if you call it alley-oop or what, but the uh, play to Jeff Green where he threw it basically full court. The ball looked like it was going out of bounds. And then Jeff Green caught it, laid it in in one motion. Um, he tried to have a couple alley-oops to DeAndre Jordan that resulted in turnovers because, you know, I think DeAndre dropped one, no surprise, but the other one was knocked away. But you can tell James Harden's a really great facilitator, and I'm interested now to see who actually handles the ball once Kyrie Irving comes back. And speaking of Kyrie Irving, it seems like he's in contact with the team. The organization knows he's coming back soon. The problem is the Nets want to get his legs under him and make sure he's in game shape before throwing him back in there. I believe we play Milwaukee on Monday, so we'll see about that if he's there or not. But I feel like Kyrie Irving now is legitimately day-to-day. -day. If he plays tomorrow, I would not be shocked. So we'll find out what happens, but it seems like he's back with the team very soon. Very good news. And how does Kyrie fit in this offense? I mean, we'll find out. I think there will be some growing pains. I don't, I don't expect to have this team hit the ground running right away. I think it will take maybe a month or two to really get themselves going and as long as they stay healthy I truly believe that this Nets team can compete with absolutely anybody in a seven game series I mean of course I think the Nets right now have the best chance in the East. Of course, the Bucks and the Celtics and even the Sixers this year are pretty good. They're the teams to be scared of, but I would take the Nets in any of those matchups. I really would. So, I mean, Milwaukee, they're like 9-4, and four, but they're not as dominant as they once were. And for the Celtics, I mean, yeah, they've been off to a pretty good start, but the Nets beat the Celtics by 20 with just Kyrie and KD. So, I mean, I know that was a while ago. They get Kemba Walker back tonight. But I think, you know, we'll find out what happens. But me personally, I'm confident about the Nets in a seven-game series with anybody from the East. And, you know, for the West, when it comes to the Clippers and Lakers, we'll find out, but you have to get there first, so that's the main thing. But it is nice knowing because, you know, in the past with the Nets, you know, when we played the Sixers in the playoffs a couple years ago, I said, ah, oh, there's no shot we win. And even last year in the bubble against the Raptors, I was like, ah, eh, no shot we win. But now it's like, hey, I expect to go into any series in the playoffs and win that series. I mean, could they lose? Yeah, but I expect personally as a fan, I know we have the talent to do it, which is a good thing to know, obviously. So, who else played well yesterday? Of course, you know, Kevin Durant, uh, his shooting numbers were 16 for 26. That's a really good percentage. I don't know what that is. 60 something percent, low 60s. Um, oh, it says it right here, 61%. Um, but he had 42 points. He was phenomenal, 5 for 5 from the line. James Harden had 15 free throws as well. He was 13 of 15, so that was nice to see. James Harden had a play where he basically ran into DeAndre Jordan on a screen, kind of, you know, threw his head back and got the call. And when James Harden was on Houston, I hated that stuff. But now that he's a Brooklyn Net, I I absolutely love it. And, you know, the same thing with Kyle Lowry. I cannot stand the way Kyle Lowry plays basketball. Yes, I respect him taking the charges, but the flopping is ridiculous. If Kyle Lowry was a net, I would love him as well. I mean, if you put on a Nets uniform, I love you. That's basically how it goes. Same thing with the Yankees, the Giants. You know, I may not like you as a player, but when you put on the uniform of a team I root for, I got to love you. So um, seeing James Harden get those foul calls for running into his own teammate was very nice to see. Uh, who else? Jeff Green, he played 29 minutes. He had a couple shots. I, I know he had a three-pointer in there from James. James Harden, he had a nice, like, behind-the-back assist to him on a bounce pass. Joe Harris took a lot of three-pointers, I feel like. He shot, where was it, four for nine from three. He took some pretty good shots. He had a nice little streak going in the first quarter. He made, like, two long threes in a row. He had one ill-advised step back that hit the front of the rim, but other than that, I think Joe Harris was fine. Um, you know, once again, DeAndre Jordan... 
wasn't too impressive. I mean, I do expect better. And honestly, um, what's his name? Who's the rookie for us? Uh, Reggie Perry played 12 minutes. He put in uh, four points and three rebounds. And I do expect him to play a, a lot. And not like a lot, a lot, but later like 15 minutes or so a game around there until Nick Claxton comes back. I do think once the second-year player Claxton does come back, I think he'll play over Perry, but if Perry just plays really well the next two or three weeks until Claxton comes back, they may, he might implement himself into that lineup and, and you know, make Claxton earn that playing time back. So we'll see. I don't know how long it will take Nick Claxton to get back exactly. I've heard three weeks. I've heard a month. We'll find out. But I do think he'll be playing a lot if, um, you know, as long as the Nets uh, trust him to be out there and be healthy and, and basically, you know, knows the offense if he's in good game shape. I do think Nick Claxton will be out there a good amount behind DeAndre Jordan. And I would not rule out the possibility that by the end of the year of Nick Claxton possibly being a starter for the Nets. I mean, I know DeAndre Jordan, it really can't get much worse. I mean, he has to get better, I would think. But if DeAndre Jordan keeps playing at this level and Nick Claxton really takes this jump in year two because Nick Claxton has a ton of upside. If he really took a year two jump and DeAndre Jordan just being an average or below average center, then you might throw Nick Claxton in there. I know Nick Claxton's a very skinny guy, but he is 6'11", long wingspan, can jump very high, finish at the rim. So, I mean, you know, he can stretch the floor as well, which DeAndre Jordan cannot do. I've seen Nick, uh, Nick Claxton hit some threes before. So, if the Nets want to put him in the starting lineup by the end of the year, it would not shock me, to be honest with you, but I'm kind of getting ahead of myself here. Um, Bruce Brown had a pretty nice game. Basically had the uh, dagger three in the corner. I think Kevin Durant kicked it out to him in the corner. He uh, he switched it. Very nice to see from him. Uh, Landry Shamit, he shot two of four. He was one of two from three. It was nice to see Sh uh, Shamit hit a three off the assist from uh, James Harden. He's now number 20, Landry Shamit. He was number 13, but of course James Harden took that number. I think it took a little bit of money, too, to get that number. But we'll, we'll find out maybe one day what exactly the uh, return for that number was. Um, that's pretty much it. I mean, I did talk about Kyrie. Uh, Tyler Johnson's still not back yet. I feel like he did not play yesterday. Chioza didn't play. Um, who else? TLC. TLC was one for two. Played 24 minutes. He did play a lot. I feel like TLC wasn't terrible. He definitely was not. It was not one of those games where I was just banging my head against the wall because of him. So that was fine. But yeah, I'm pretty excited about this team. I mean, you know, I don't know how it's going to turn out in 2025, 2026, 2027, but in the now, the Nets are a very good team, and I think as long as they continue to play together, they'll get even better. And as I said before, the main thing for me is that I trust this team to win in any seven-game series that they're in. And that's really the main thing because that's how the playoffs are. You play for a championship. I think as long as this team stays healthy and they get as good as I think they can get, this can be a two or three NBA Finals winning team. I mean, maybe I'm crazy, but I think they're that good. So I hope I'm right, and I hope the Nets find a way to actually make that happen and make the trade worth it. But James Harden so far... Looked very good. Is he a bit out of shape, maybe? And he looks a bit heavy? Yeah, but, I mean, it was funny because they had that you know, pregame photo of him taking a jump shot, and it was, like, from the side, and he looked very skinny from that shot. And people were like, wow, this guy really just played us. But, you know, there's rumors about did he wear a fat suit in Houston? I wouldn't go that far, but I think James Harden, honestly... I think he just made himself look fat. I think he tucked his shirt in at like a very weird angle that just made his belly hang over. I mean, I don't know. He, he did look a lot like, not like a lot skinnier, but he looked skinnier on, you know, on the Nets than he did in Houston uh, previously. But I think James Harden knows he could lose about 10 or 15 more pounds. But hey, I mean, if he's playing at a high level, then I guess it's okay. I mean, a little weight can't hurt anybody, but as long as he's healthy and playing at this level, I think it's fine. But yeah, I mean, other than the, uh, and even the rebounds, the Nets weren't that bad on the rebounds. I want to take a look real quick. I think they got out-rebounded on the offensive end. It was 9-4 to four offensive rebounds favoring Orlando. And yeah, the Nets had no answer whatsoever for Nikola Vucevic, which was kind of annoying. I want to see Vucevic's numbers because there was a point in this game where Vucevic was hitting every three-pointer. He was 6 of 12 from three, 34 points, 10 rebounds, 7 assists. I mean, that that's a lot but you know the magic i know are not at full strength they don't have jonathan isaac they don't have markel Fultz, and the nets only won by seven but as i said it's the first game james harden literally got here like two days ago or even yesterday so you know it's fine i'm really okay with that i'm happy they won that game obviously so you know orlando they're not the best team they're, they are six and seven now they are a playoff team technically but you know, I mean, the Nets will have tougher competition, especially Monday against the Bucks. so we'll see what happens with that one. But yeah, 
good game. The turnovers got to get better. I expect KD and, and James Harden to get better in that department. But, you know, we'll see how Kyrie fits in. That's the next big thing. So I think once Kyrie makes his Nets debut, which are not debut, but once he comes back from his little absence, um, I'll probably make a video reacting to that game. And hopefully it's Monday. If not, I think we play the Cavs on Wednesday, Thursday or something. We'll see Jared Allen in a uh, Cavaliers uniform, which will be a bit uneasy for me. It will be a little hard to see that one. But um, yeah, and actually, you know, shout out, not shout out, but prayers out to Carol Levert, they found some type of, uh, I don't know, they call it like a mass on his kidney. I mean, that was terrible to hear. I'm happy they caught it, obviously. This this whole trade could be a blessing in disguise because once they go through a physical, of course, they run all these tests and all that, and they caught that mass on his kidney. So hopefully they caught it at a very early stage. I don't know if it's cancer or anything like that. I hope not. But um, Karis LeVert's an awesome dude. I hope he's okay. I hope he returns to the floor very soon. And his Pacers are a very good team. I think they're 8-4, and four, so we'll see Karis LeVert in the playoffs, hopefully playing well for the Pacers. But yeah, that was pretty scary and pretty, you know, I honestly thought it said like knee injury at first but then I saw it was kidney and I was like oh my god you know but hopefully he's okay but yeah that'll do it for this video Nets are 1-0 in the James Harden era leave in the comments your reaction to that game and I'll talk to you guys once Kyrie Irving comes back